Welcome to Four Calling Birds, honest conversations that give us all a voice. May I introduce Stephen Carter Bailey, Great British Bake Off Queen and resident agony uncle. No, I should have written it down. Apologies. Right, let's go. Natalie Spence, actress and singer. That's my. That's me in my sleep. I'm sleep singing. Meredith Hepner Chapman, PR guru. We're recording. Jeremy's left me to it. And myself, Hayley Clapham, and I'm your host for this week's show, episode three of Four Calling Birds. And this week, I've been chatting to photographer Joanne Warren Moore about her photography project, This Woman's Work, supporting local businesswomen in her area and raising funds for UK charity SmartWorks. So I'm here today with my good friend, Joanne Warren Moore, to tell us all about her amazing project that she's done over lockdown called This Woman's Work in support of SmartWorks Charity. Hi Jo, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi Hayley, thank you for having me. Oh, so pleasure. excited to talk again about all of this. Oh, it's such an amazing project. You felt like an obvious choice to me to um, to chat to on this podcast. Now, you supported uh, the UK charity SmartWorks. Why did you choose SmartWorks? There's, there's lots of reasons why I was drawn to this particular charity. I'll talk a bit about them first, and then I think maybe the reasons why will make sense. Mm. So the um, the charity provide high quality interview clothing and training to unemployed women in need. So I think women are referred from organisations such as job centres, work programmes, prisons, um, homeless shelters, mental health charities, and the the idea is. The clothing is empowering, as we all know. You mm. sort of dress for the part and the, um, the the clothing is given to these women so they can keep it, go to their interview and um, use the training that they have um, been given by SmartWorks to secure the job. When looking at this woman's work and empowering women in the workplace, it sort of made sense that these two things would fit together mm, yeah the whole um harnessing of um power possessed by clothing i believe works in the same way as photography so by me giving women something that they can use for their work for their business to make them feel confident in selling themselves mm. also fits very well with giving women clothing and um training to yeah. help them secure the job in the first place. So that's sort of where it, where, where the link um, came from. But actually the reason why I chose to sort of focus on women in the first place all began from myself being influenced by this most amazing book that I read years and years ago mm. by a husband and wife team called um, Nicholas D. Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn. And the book is called Half the Sky, How to Change the World. And it just really opened my eyes about women across the globe. Yeah. And I just thought from that moment, I wasn't doing enough to contribute to the change that we needed. And uh, I just always wanted to find a way going forward to provide opportunities for women wherever I could yeah. um, in my work. So, yeah, that's sort of where, where the, sort of the, the, the seed was planted. And then um, lots of ideas have just been popping into my mind um, going going through the different stages and projects that I've been doing and uh, the pandemic seemed the good the good time to a good t- time to like get going with it I suppose <laughs> and stop thinking about it yeah well we all had a lot of time on our hands didn't we we couldn't do very much um it, yeah. it certainly does seem like your project and SmartWorks um, married together really nicely so talk a little bit more about the project and um, obviously you said at the beginning of the pandemic it was a good time to start it. How did it actually all begin? How did you start contacting these women? It was um, it was a photography series that I shot in the summer just after the first lockdown. Mm. So I had a bit of time beforehand to sort of get my head around logistics and how that might work. But 
it, it initially started because I wanted to support local women in business because I just knew how many plates we were all spinning. Mm. Um, when when I was like messaging friends to see how people were doing, it, it, it was the same story throughout. So the women that I knew were all juggling work, motherhood, um, homeschooling, general mental load, and obviously that guilt that we all feel constantly about not ever being able to give it's a hundred percent so that feeling that when you're obviously in normal times that's there and it's a loud voice but when you're living through a pandemic as well and you're also taking on the extra stuff um with your homeschooling and everything like the experiences we'd never had before Mm. it was just so overwhelming and I thought I think now's the time you know to give something to sort of help because I couldn't work myself no. um so why not try and, and and start thinking about a way to to make this happen so the first thing that happened was um I'd actually pulled the idea from a project I was planning earlier in the year which it, it did look a little different but the principle was the same in terms of promoting um women supporting women mm. and it was um it was going to be for mat for, for women on mat leave going back into the workplace mm. and it was based on my own experiences as a freelance photographer mm. and stepping out of an industry which is very fast paced and then having two two gaps where I had two children two bouts of mat leave and then trying to step back into that world was really difficult and I thought what can I give to these women in the same boat just sort of a lovely empowering experience of like having your portrait taken maybe getting a makeup artist involved giving something for your LinkedIn page or or you know your work press releases or whatever it might be and just Mm. sort of empowering people to feel ready like they're sort of hitting the ground running a little bit um but um obviously then the pandemic happened so I sort of tweaked the idea to fit in with the fact that people weren't working at all at the moment like most women I knew were sacrificing their businesses and um being with the children all day Mm -hmm. so um that's where the sort of the idea started and I bounced some ideas off some good friends of mine Eleanor Stevenson who she's actually the one that came up with the title this woman's work which Mm -hmm. is based on a Kate Bush song about pregnancy which I just thought was so awesome Mm. it just fits so well and who doesn't love Kate Bush like obviously legend um yeah exactly so um we went with it and then um she did some graphics for me to help promote it and Mm. my friend um Jane Walton helped me with her expertise in PR and she Mm. helped me with my copy and polished everything and it just having these girls behind me you know like I just I I just think women have such a unique ability to lift each other and give ideas and support and it really it really sort of compelled me to just go for it because I was you know as with any ideas I just sort of was questioning it is it the right time is it going Mm. to work but I just thought yeah let's just let's just do it everybody sort of thinks it's it sounds good so um I sort of ran with it and then my husband built a studio on the driveway for me and it was the most DIY thing as you know it was amazing part (laughs) it was amazing so yeah we uh we just we just did it outside socially distanced it was lovely to be out in the fresh air and Mm. it happened through the summer so the weather was good um it it was it was properly knocked together but uh you know lots of people helped make this happen so I'm really appreciative of that it was amazing. And I was, um, as you just mentioned, I was really honoured to be part of it. But it just it just felt, you know, so organic and natural. And it wasn't sort of, it wasn't this sort of pristine sort of solar studio that we were going into it. Every part of it felt like a part of you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and actually going back to what you just said about women lifting each other up, I think there is something very special about females supporting females and we have got the power to make each other feel invincible in a way that's really special and unique yes definitely there's no there's just there's no ego there was no it just everybody was so willing to give themselves to it Mm. and and support it and help it in every way that they could so whether that was 
actually coming in to take an image and and promote the charity or yeah. whether that was I'm going to then go on to write a piece about it and like you're doing now you know an interview about it and mm. I think that it's not just it's not just about promoting the the idea of women supporting women this charity you know they're doing amazing work which people need to know about mm. and ev- everything that goes along with that looking at the issues that women are facing day to day let alone during a pandemic you know the the stats of unemployment amongst women and it's just so heartbreaking and it, we we all just really need to work together to to make this world better and i think that actually the if i'm if i'm honest i i really think that by empowering girls and and women um with education and employment is is a massive part of of um solving a lot of social issues how many women did you did you photograph altogether? There were seventy women altogether. And how long did that take? Like over how long? What period of time? Oh my goodness! Um, I started it in. I think my first session was towards the end of June, mm. and it finished just before the second lockdown. So that would have been. I shot up to half term in October. Yeah, yeah. Mid October, and. I loved every moment of it, really, but it was it there was it was a lot of hours, hundreds yeah. of hours. <laughs> because it's not just that sort of hour or two hours that you're shooting; it's the editing and everything yeah. else that goes with it. Yeah, yeah, um, the, the editing, the retouching, and then just the general admin, booking people in mm-hmm. and delivering images, um, people's questions. Lots of these women have never had a professional shot in their lives before, mm. even though they're business owners or, you know, in the professional workplace. It's it is so important to, like, go through this process, I think, and have this have this way of showing yourself and what you're about and uh, get, walking women through this like step by step is 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 very um, it's very important and time consuming, you know, so yeah. um Absolutely. Yeah, it, was, uh, it would have been a unique experience for lots, lots of people and, and quite daunting if you're not, if you yeah. don't have any experience of that. It's really, so, you know, suddenly you've got a camera, a big camera in your face. It's like, wow, you, I just can't move my limbs, <laughs> get really stiff. Yeah. And, you, you know, like, um, that, that I'm very mindful of this, even even working with people that are used to it. I think they still experience this on one level or another. Mm. Um I think it's just something that's a little bit makes you feel a bit exposed and um and vulnerable and vulnerable yeah and even though you're just chatting to um a person about anything a bit like when you go to the hairdressers I suppose and you sort of um strike a a rapport very quickly Mm. um it still takes a while to get over the fact you've got huge equipment around you and it's um it's unfamiliar yeah yeah, and so it's a real skill for you to just be able to relax somebody into it. You, well, I just, you know me, I can just talk <laughs> and talk and talk, as I'm doing right now. I just <laughs> I just talk at people until they start talking back. What challenges, um, obviously you were doing this in a pandemic, so there are the obvious challenges, but was were there any other things that you faced that you maybe didn't think that you would initially? Yeah, um, the challenges. So the obviously the the things that come to light are women that were the main caregiver of their kids. So they the schedules were absolutely crazy. Yeah. Like they were working with several children, some some two or three that have various different year groups and work going on, and they're running businesses from the kitchen table, and mm. they're making time for a portrait. That actually, feels like such a luxury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But saying that, many of these people used it as a time actually to just go upstairs, get ready, leave the house and do something for themselves. Yeah. And I was so thankful to be able to give people that opportunity because they'd not done it for months and months. Mm. Um, but yeah, the the whole sort of um, administrative getting people booked in was very, very hard. And myself having my kids around in the house 
whilst I was sort of nipping in and out and, and working mm. on these sessions was um was a bit tricky. But I think one of my um bigger challenges was reaching out to different communities in our area. Mm. I need Going forward, I just need to find a way to reach deeper into the community, especially to women of colour. I just discovered so many amazing women in businesses. It just feels like I barely scratched the surface Mm. with the women in Wartham Forest. There's there's just so much awesome stuff happening. Um, So I think for me, it's, it's more about figuring out ways to to find out where everyone is how to make those connections to how other to, communities yeah. in the area yeah. Yeah. yeah because of course in 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 normal in normal daily everyday life we we do live with a disconnection so during a pandemic where everybody's sort of retreated a bit to their personal spaces mm. it's very hard to to go out and like nowhere's open you can't sort of go and talk to people and find out what they do it's you know there's no networking happening so it's mm. um yeah so that that was definitely challenging as well your plans for the project going forward would you like to continue with this woman's work or have you got something completely different in mind yes i would I would like to make this woman's work a yearly project, but mm. I think it would have to be on a slightly smaller scale. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> but um, as part of social, like as as part of positive social impact, I think it's important to sort of be contributing in in a regular way, but obviously in a way that can be balanced with actually running a business as well. So mm. that will be something that I'll be um, looking at, and also another interest of mine is that the storytelling element of portraiture is obviously very important Mm. and a running theme throughout my work and I think um, one of the things that I'd like to move into is um, looking at the connections between motherhood and activism and those sorts of deep feelings that we experience to protect our children especially um, well currently but also looking to the future and um and making making the world as as um, safe for them as possible, really. Mm. So there's obviously a lot going on at the moment. Um, you've got groups like um, Extinction Rebellion, Black Lives Matter, but as far as I can sort of see it, it's literally when you strip it all back, it's all looking at protecting children and the world that they live in and making mm. it better. So I'm just... I'd love to do a portrait series with these women and um, talk about why why they're putting themselves on the front line, why they're sitting in the roads, why they're getting arrested and um, what's what's driving them to do that. But motherhood in particular, I'm interested in. Mm. That sounds amazing. So if people want to see your portraits, this woman's work project, they're all on your Instagram page. Um, so my Instagram handle is Joanne Warren Moore and also my website now has a personal project section which you can also see all of the images taken yes yeah, so, um, and my website's also the same joannewarrenmoore.co.uk so you could ho- head over there and, and take a look I think also the links are still available to um, click onto the just giving page which has mm. got a lot of project information on there if anybody wants to know a bit more about the specifics of how it worked and 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 what the format was of the project etc and if people wanted to contribute to the just giving page for smart works charity mm. um, are they able to do that through your just giving they are yes it's still going um yeah there's a there's a donate now button um still live on the page joe thank you so much for your time talking to me about your amazing project very important project this woman's work And um, it sounds like you've got some amazing projects um, up your sleeve. And I don't know, maybe there's like some sort of lovely photography book that needs to be published with your work in it. I, you know, it's, I'd love that. It's such a dream. I I always think about this, a coffee table book or something. Mm. Um, I would love to do that. I am so excited for the children to go back to school so I can start getting my next ideas. <laughs> but yes, yeah, that's um 
Yeah, it's certainly on the cards at some point, hopefully. Brilliant. Well, I'm sure it's going to happen. Thank you, love. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. It's been nice to revisit. And um, and same here. Same here. It's been so and it's been so nice to talk about your your future aspirations. And they sound amazing. So that was Jo Warren Moore talking about her photography project, This Woman's Work, that she did to support SmartWorks. Now, SmartWorks is a UK charity. Um, jo told you a little bit about it. And it helps unemployed women in need by giving them interview training and supplying them with clothes to wear for interviews. Um, and the Duchess of Sussex, interesting, interestingly, is a patron. Aww. And lots of amazing businesses support SmartWorks, Bobby Brown, John Lewis, Hobbs, Barclays, um, and lots, lots more. Um, and I think it's a really worthy charity just to get women back up on their feet. Um, they're often referred to SmartWorks from homeless shelters, mental health charities, prisons, care homes, uh, and various other places. So I think they're doing a great job to help women get back into the workplace. What did you all think? Oh, I love Joe. I think she's brilliant. She's such a wonderful photographer as well. But, yeah, um, her photographs what an, are beautiful. Yeah, yeah, really amazing. What an amazing um, venture, really. I mean, apart from doing something so lovely, you've got to, you've got to really. I mean, that that as well for her, I imagine, is so good for her self worth as well. Lockdown, especially, we've all felt fairly redundant at times, and I think to be able to remain active. Absolutely, and I think she just um, essentially wanted to help other women. That was where the project was born from um and in lockdown she because she's a photographer of course it was very difficult to do her job as she would have done normally so um yeah as she said she built a little studio out in the back garden um and then she was able to do this project and yeah as like you said she takes incredible photos and it was such a wonderful gift to give these women um, and they can use it, use those uh, portraits in, in any way that they see fit in their professional career on a website, in LinkedIn, however. Frame it, put it on the wall. Beautiful I, pictures. I do think getting <laughs> professional headshots do suddenly validate you a little bit more. I remember after having children, I'd been a career woman, but I had children and really didn't think I could do anything other than cook and clean after I had kids. Mm. I also had does a- that, to be honest. <laughs> I also had an ex-husband was very much of that mindset. So uh, I, when I started working again after having children, I got jobs in school kitchens and things like that because I just thought, well, that's what mums do, you know, fit around the kids. And I was so miserable. And then I started up my little PR thing and someone offered me free headshots for in return for some PR. And it just suddenly, it just makes it, it just takes it to another level. And suddenly you think, actually, yeah, I'm kind of sassy. Mm. And... I, it's so important to make women feel it's empowering. Valued. It's so empowering. It's the most wonderful feeling because I again, and I know Natalie, you would have had the, the same done um, being being an actor. But I mean, I mm. I did pay for mine. I'm not, you know, I was just lucky that at the time I was financially in a position to be able to pay for them. But it, it, I'm not saying no one takes you seriously without them. But it really does. Uh, you you bypass a lot of hurdles if you do have them. It changes um, your um, yeah. Instagram. I mean, the minute you put professional shots on Instagram, you you grab far more for far more attention. I mean, I would always say a quality pick. Great for a Tinder profile as well. Yeah. Not that I've uh, I've been on Tinder for a while, but you know they always look good when you've got a pro- professional photos. Is, there, is anyone else um, on their mobile just frantically checking to see what Natalie says about herself? Yeah. <laughs> checking her Tinder profile. Nineteen. Yeah, nice one, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> It's so true, but it's so um, funny how people see you as well, the way that they like you, you know, photographers. I, I remember sort of yeah. first having my photograph taken and I have to say, I really enjoy it. You feel the centre of the universe and I know some people hate that, but for me, having your photo taken is part of that sort of wonderful process. It's the the past totally professional good. photographer, and again, Natalie, I'm going to ask you what yours were like, but mine, mm. my photographer was insanely talented, like Joe, but put me at ease, made me feel comfortable, mm. relaxed, and knew what made me smile. It took hours. I mean, it took a lot, of, a lot of work to get these yeah. photos. And in return, you get something which is a natural version of you. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a very strange experience at the same time. Um, but 
when you get a result that that works it's amazing but it is quite risky because as you said Stephen they are so they can be very expensive to get um professional headshots or portrait photos and well, I'll um, be honest I had, and- Go on, you have had much of No, I was, I was going to say I've had a few. I've, I've had a few um, sessions over the years, head, headshot sessions, and um, I had I booked in one headshot session because you need to get them done uh, every couple of years, really, to like you know show the change of your face or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, there's this one photographer I booked with, and and they're about four hundred and fifty pounds or something. Um, and I had a great session. He made me feel really comfortable. Um, we were getting on well and I felt quite, I felt good. I was seeing them as I was going along. And then I got the photos back a few weeks, a few I felt like that later. was going to take a dodgy turn. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where this is going. <laughs> Not a dodgy turn. I just didn't like the photos. I just didn't think they were like me and they weren't professional. and Not they weren't professional enough, but I didn't, they didn't portray me how I wanted to to be portrayed as an actor um Mm. so in the end a couple of months later I got headshots with the photographer that took my previous headshots again um and they were so much better um Mm. but it's just it's such a risky thing but what Joanne's doing is um incredible she's she's photographed 70 women and um, that is invaluable to those 70 women but she said she spoke to them all didn't she she got to know them yeah and that's so valuable I was really lucky to have been part of the project as well. And she's a friend, um, but she is an incredible photographer. Photography, I've worked within photography most of my professional um, working life. And it's not just about pressing a button on a shutter. It's you have to be able to put people at ease mm. and relax them. And you, you just having all those people skills is uh, it's so important. And, you know, she's she's got them. And she's yeah, and she's got incredible talent as well. But yes, that project on her Instagram page is so good, and it's so interesting. So many different women, um, lots of different jobs. It's just really interesting to sit down and scroll through and have a read. Um, you know what what they're all doing and how they've approached the challenges of lockdown and and how they've adapted or changed the way they work or completely changed completely changed their careers. It's really interesting. Photographers have had a really rough deal, I would say, because not only have they lost masses of work this year, but I mean, there is a a slight feeling that people think with new iPhones and Instagram and different filters and apps that anyone can be a professional photographer. And I would say to anyone, you cannot beat a professional Mm -hmm. photographer the way they like you. And it's very interesting Mm -hmm. what you say, Natalie, how you didn't like... um, the the, yeah. the way you were represented by by that photographer the way they saw you that was their vision and I remember the very first shoot I had done I really didn't like it because I had so many insecurities about my face I'd learned to pose in a certain way that made me not hate that photo so much and suddenly the photographer was saying show your teeth and I was like I've never shown my teeth and they're fabulous teeth and actually when I initially hated them it's by having those photos done it made me love parts it made me love my face again and made me appreciate not love my face that sounds so but you know what I mean it made me kind of love the things I'd Mm, hated and actually think you know what Mm. I hate my teeth but I've got them all and I'm 46 so I should actually really smile (laughs) but it is it's it's all about lighting and finding a photographer that that's why models work that's why Diana worked with Testino and Annie Leibovitz all these all these models use these photographers consistently it's because when you find a photographer that can shoot you and you both love what you see and you feel it's you and the photographer feels it you it's you and you're lit beautifully i mean i've been on shoots and there's been like 3 hours of just lighting set up before you even start shooting and that's the beauty of a really wonderful photographer so what what joe's doing it's incredible because it's not just taking photos it's as you say speaking to these women getting inside their psyche understanding their personalities lighting them in a specific way that she feels they should be portrayed and i've been very lucky to have photos done by joe haley who we all know is designing our incredible sweatshirt range used to have a background in fashion 
and I've mm. been very lucky to model for Haley's range and Joe mm. shot us and um oh my goodness the photos she took of me was so empowering and so good for my self confidence and she, she was great because she said that's that is you it's just lighting and I loved what jo- Joanne was saying about women empowering women and how it's just mm. so important. And I'm, I touch on that uh, a little bit on my on the next episode of Four Calling Birds uh, with with my guests. But it's it is really important for women to empower women. And I wonder what you you guys would uh, say to your friends if you. I mean, maybe let's give a little shout out to to a, a, a woman a woman of yours. A woman of yours? That's not even a thing. Um, <laughs> but a friend. A, <laughs> a friend girlfriend. You, a girlfriend that you'd like to uh, give a shout out to. I, I, I think I would like to give a shout out to all of my girlfriends, all, every single woman that I know, my daughters, my mum, my stepmom, my mother-in-law, all of my friends, because women are having a bit of a tough time at the moment. And I think we all need to come together and um, and be there for each other, for sure. So every woman um, out there listening and every man out there listening as well, I'm just giving you a big hug. I'm enveloping you <laughs> in my feathers. I love that. That's Thanks, so hey. nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> good, 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 good. Now, just to go back to um, the work side of the interview ideal job if you could do absolutely anything in the world regardless of training or education what would you do well you mentioned uh having a a big hug there um (laughs) i'd love to uh, be a professional cuddler (laughs) oh you were going to be in demand (laughs) i don't even know if that exists you'd be very redundant this year yeah, I know, my, but how busy are you going to be on June the twenty first? Oh yes, oh yeah. My boyfriend's just moved in with me. I don't think I don't think he'd be too happy. But are you waiting until June the twenty first then, Natalie, to hug him? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> what about you, Mez? What job would you would you do? Oh well, anything that doesn't involve admin or data entry or spread. No, do you know what I'd love? I When I was little, I always wanted to be a DJ and I used to sit and play vinyls and do faux American accents like David Kidd Jensen. Um, not that his was a faux American accent, but <laughs> in my head, all DJs had these American accents. Although yeah. David Kidd Jensen was Canadian. I better correct that in case there's a... A Canadian listener who says, no, David Kajensen was Canadian. Um, the eagle has landed. Does any, I, I was a London kid, so we listened to Capital Radio. I don't know if uh, you guys, well, A, I'm a lot older, but B, I don't know if you had it in uh, Swansea or D- Didn't have that Shires. in Wales, I'm afraid. No, didn't have that in Wales. But it anyway, was Radio 1. He inspired me, uh, or just the, the DJs of the time. Chris Tarrant as well. I, s- sadly, men, there were no women DJs around really at the time. But mm. um, I wanted to be a DJ. And actually, I guess this podcast is as close to living my dream as possible. Yeah. So I'm very lucky. It's lovely. It's absolutely lovely just to be able to talk for a living and do what you love. And Richard Branson says, if you love what you do, you're more likely to be good at it. Exactly. Well, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Yeah. No, exactly. What about you, Stephen? Well, funnily enough, actually, I and I'm going to be very honest here and say, I'm not, I'm not going to say it's easy because um, it's not always easy. Like, you know, today I was rushing around trying to deliver a cake and fretting but I actually do get to do what I love doing that is creating cakes I'm a I'm a creator of um custom made cakes I don't have orders dictated to me I get to be creative I also get to teach people so I, I'm actually very lucky and I that is sort of I'm getting towards my dream job but as Meredith said I am a talker and a discusser and a researcher and I love love podcasting and I love learning about people and it actually helps me be a better man it does actually help me um you know despite uh, being a gay man it doesn't stop me from being a male who doesn't have a female perspective all of the time and so I get to learn about the difficulties and what you know and by listening to other people I get to learn about the problem and and potentially what the solution is um so I'm very lucky I have to say I'm doing what I love doing you are living your best life right now, Stephen. 
You have no idea how good it is right now, Hayley. I'm having a cup of tea out of a, a mug with the Queen on the side of it. What have you made uh, today? Go on. I'm I wearing think it's... three-day-old clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very appropriate to tell everyone what you made today. I'm actually, well, I'm, well no, I'm making it. So I have finished... <laughs> Meredith, you, you're not going to know the irony of this until I tell you what I've literally just made. And that is a saucepan cake. <laughs> So when we're talking about empowering women, you're saying, oh yeah, saucepan cake. No, I'm not talking no, about no, the No, I know which cake. one you meant. <laughs> the cake I am making is for, uh, is for my goddaughter. She is seven years old on St. Mm. Patrick's Day. And uh, I am making her a full-size standing flamingo cake. <gasps> oh! Yes. What? Oh, I know. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, so, so that is her, her <gasps> seventh birthday cake. Wow. Oh my. Amazing. Oh, and and it's life-sized, isn't it? You said it's gonna, she, I she think wanted it's gonna, it life-sized. I can't say I've ever felt <laughs> oh up a gosh. flamingo, so I don't know technically what size they are, but it will be a thumping great cake. Um, oh my God, that is amazing. I have just FaceTimed her today. To, she's so excited. She's got a flamingo oh. Polly Pocket today. And she said, <gasps> she knows I'm making her a cake. She God, doesn't know what kind kid. of cake. Yeah, she needs yeah. one of our sweatshirts. She definitely definitely she, she needs to come on the podcast she does flamingos not pick pictures <laughs> she needs to be a calling bird yeah anyone that watched you on bake-off knows that this is your forte illusion cakes would it be an illusion cake it's a, it is a, a trompe l'oeil which is an illusion cake a trick of the eye so essentially it will be a full-sized i was about to say functioning flamingo i'm not totally sure flamingos function other than just to look pretty <laughs> but she will she sorry I'm assuming it's a lady. I don't know if male flamingos look any different. I thought male flamingos were grey. Anyway, back I think the they're room. all the same. Yeah, oh, I think they? they're all okay. the same. And is um, it down to what they eat that they're that colour as well? Crustaceans. It's the, it's the colour of the crustaceans in mm. shells they eat. Um, yeah, anyway. So she will... She It is a girl. Uh, she's going to stand on one leg and the other leg will be sort of cocked slightly underneath. And it's, yes, it is steel rod, which is then wrapped in fondant, spray-coloured yellow, and then... Um, <gasps> She'll have a, the vanilla, the body is a vanilla cake, which will be covered in little pink chocolate feathers. And then the head is a font, is fondant oh and with a little gold beak. And she'll be surrounded oh by little God. macaron and leaves. And... <gasps> oh, amazing. We are going to put pictures on our socials. That's what I want for my birthday in July 26, Stephen, just saying. No yeah, July 26, even. July 26, I will be in Dallas at the Ewing Ranch. Oh, I don't Making a it. birthday cake. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. Really? Yeah. At the actual you in at, at South Fork. South Fork, yeah. No, be, you I'm, are not. I'm hosting a birthday party there for a friend. That's amazing. Well, I'll just come. <gasps> yeah, you could just come, Hayley. That's fine. Just come. <laughs> oh. uh, you could be Sue Ellen. Just, I'll just oh, say this is, yes. this she is was Sue Ellen. Favorite. She yeah. was my favourite. Last night, my daughter and I were chatting about Tic Tacs, and I was remembering that when me and my friends were all little. Do you remember how Sue Ellen used to like throw pills back and then take a drink? Yes. When we used to play Dallas yes. at school, we used to we play. Used to do the did same. you? I bet everyone did the two times. Is it bad that I don't know who Sue Ellen is? What? No, no, no. Because no, she yes, was born 20 years after appalling. her father was shot. It's Just sat here like, what is happening? Did you not watch? No, you, your parents will know about Sue Ellen and Dallas. Okay. Okay. Ask them. I'll it's have wonderful. Have I have a question for you guys. Okay. Um, so, uh, Joanne was telling us that the name of uh, this woman's work came from her friend, Emma, who named it after a song um, by Kate Bush. So mm. I wanted to ask you, if you were going to do a project influenced by Joanne's, what would you name it and which song would it be based on? I know my answer. Oh, go on then, Stephen. Uh, yeah, go oh. Stephen first. All right, okay, I'll, I'll be very quick. So actually, I've got two, I've got two, I'll be very, very quick. Uh, my first is, is actually the, the, ne the what name I've given my own company, which is Sweet Design Cakes by me. Uh, Sweet Design is a song by Sia. And the, the, ah. the, the project I would run would be another song by Sia called Bird Set Free. And I'm actually looking for a charity in the UK that supports... Um, victims of domestic violence who have had to flee their homes and that would be I would want to do something along those lines oh, helping them re helping them restart again so from bed sheets to pots and pans to financial help and legal support I think something like that uh 
called Bird Set Free would be absolutely wonderful. If you listen to the lyrics of Bird Set Free, it is a really, it's a very emotional song, especially if you have been in a, a position or a relationship where you've felt trapped. So that's, that's what I would do. That is so wonderful. That that's was like really lovely. a way better answer than I was expecting. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> I think that I think that's absolutely fantastic, actually, because a lot of the time um, people often say, just leave, just go. It's, it's a lot harder than that, aside from the emotional aspects. and the It's like telling got... somebody with depression to cheer up. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. pointless. Or someone pregnant to not be so pregnant. I mean, it's that ridiculous. And a lot of domestic abuse sufferers have lost all their finance. You know, the, the, the partner will have taken everything, so they can't even get a cab. So the idea of being able to help someone almost plan to leave <clears throat> I think that's where charities are really needed once you've left there's quite a, a few uh, to help you I, I speak with a bit of experience on this um, but prior to leaving there's no one really there to sort of tell you kind of what you need to do to get ready and that sounds very much along the line Stephen of where someone that's planning to sort of flee and escape but also after they've gone to sort of be there for them as well someone to hold their hand throughout the process because to leave is the hardest part well the, the, the line the lines are clipped wings I was a broken thing you you literally clipped my wings and held me back and like you said for a lot of and I will say women here but I mean I know that it does this applies to everybody but for me um you know I was I did leave a situation that was difficult and it was uh, a nigh and impossible. So for a woman who has not been in work for a long time, um, through choice or not choice, who is uh, financially dependent on somebody else and potentially has dependents underneath her, I can't imagine. So my, I mean, I mean, I, I, I think of you know my sister and my mum and friends who have done it, and I think, oh my goodness, you are inspirational. But I would love for there to be. Uh, something there that that people could fall back on, even if it's just somebody at the end of the phone or a text, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think a a text service, something like that would be so A discreet text service, but even at the end to say, like a citizen's advice, you know, just to say legally this is what you can do, because a lot of the time, you know, you get things like, I'm going to take you for all your worth, I'm going to take the kids away from you, and these threats build up, and that's for me, is just having a little bit of clarity in what is essentially a really challenging time. Um, but then that naturally that would then hopefully flow into something like what Joe's doing, Joanne's doing and, you know, helping women mm. get back into, into the workforce and being part of, you know, and earning their own money and be, building, you know, that strength up again, because I, I was so inspired listening to her. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to let everybody else talk about <laughs> their, their project. Meredith, do you have, do you have, I know you have your oh, own, gosh, well, um, pr- project or company. We have Four Calling Birds, which, of course, is in a song. And I think, actually, I hope what we're doing by giving our honest opinion, which people may not agree with, may agree with, but to know that we've all been through different things. Hopefully someone can get inspiration or help or motivation from something we're talking about or one of our guests. Um, So actually, whilst it's most definitely not my favourite song, um, partridge in a pear tree and what have you i oh, think calling birds. We, well there we go we have we are doing it we are we are doing something i think that is quite empowering we are female-led but we love men and women um and we love the men who are educating the men um that do need uh to be reined in should i say or mm-hmm. maybe maybe um put into check Uh, my husband was saying earlier today it's his responsibility now to um, almost when there's usual lad banter to almost call it out now um, and just I don't know if you'd be happy if people were saying that about your daughter or your wife and I think that's if we can kind of show people a very brave person to do that it does but the kind of men that we have around us we're very very lucky I know our partners and Stephen you you're you're all real women lovers um for the right reasons you are you have strong female roles in your life and you've seen women go through hell and back and as Eleanor Roosevelt said you never know how strong a woman but what is it women are like tea bags you don't know how strong they are until you put them in hot water and I think Hopefully we will be addressing subjects um, that do tackle issues and do 
inspire. So I would say for Calling Birds, really, I've got lots and lots of favourite songs. I, I, I was originally going to say I Am Woman by Helen Reddy. Mm. Did you know um, what? That was, that was mine. Well, there you go. Yeah. You have that. <laughs> and uh, I'll stick to Four Calling Birds because I think we're doing it. I'm living the dream doing this podcast and I take enormous... Um, strength and help from not only working with you but listening to what our guests have to say and to Mm. understand all our different opinions we do fall into a habit sometimes of echo chambers and I think hopefully this will educate me and I think that's all we can ask for is to carry on being educated yeah Yeah, totally point so Natalie yours is I am woman what would your venture be well, um, I, I thought of the song as I was asking, as I was thinking of the question, um, because I recently saw a film called I Am Woman and I didn't actually know much about Helen Reddy, um, but it's um, occurred to me whilst talking about it that I think it would be great to have some sort of um, uh, project or, or organisation that helps uh, women or, or just or just men and women in the music industry and and actors um, and the, in the performing industry. So, um, yeah, I think it would be called I Am Woman. And actually, I... I, I, um, I record my sleep sometimes and it picks up on, uh, on, uh, on sounds that it hears and it, I, I sang I Am Woman in my sleep one night it was uh it was it was, wow. must have had a real real impact on me um it's, it is <laughs> it is an can... anthem it is an anthem yeah. I mean she sang that at a equal rights uh feminist rally uh and yeah. cha- changed almost the course of history so it was it was amazing I had no idea about it until a couple of months ago and uh the song really really resonated with me so um yeah, it would be some sort of help in in the music industry, um, and yeah, that would be that would be my Amazing. project. I that's am. that's pretty pretty cool, and that is a brilliant Do you want film to hear me as well. It? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my God, I don't even sound that good in real life. <laughs> that's my that's me in my sleep. I'm sleep singing. I think what Joanne has done is absolutely incredible. Um, And I know I'm terrified about going back to work next month. I have been furloughed, but I can't imagine what it would be like, you know, especially being out of work for so long, even just with maternity leave or having raised a family. What what advice do we think we could give to anybody in a situation like that? I think, Stephen, in in response to that, I think what you can do in in this situation and going back and and in any situation really if you're if you're struggling is reach out to friends but you know people um are often a bit a bit apprehensive too but i think something that i've learned over the last few months especially during lockdowns and and stuff is just just your friends will be there for you um and Mm. and if and if you don't feel confident or comfortable talking to friends about um, struggles that you're going through, reach out to someone else. F- find find a group on Facebook or, um, uh, th- you know, there are there are loads of loads of options out there. But just talking about stuff is um, is really helpful. Yeah, There's, I think we're all at the moment, and this is this is everybody in the workforce heading back into work in the next couple of months as as you know we start to read regenerate the economy and, and start to move back to a new normality we're all going to be feeling this this in oh this fear this sort of um fear of what you know what is new normal going to be but i think what what we forget sometimes is that if you have been on maternity leave for you know six months a year or even been away for an extended period of time to raise a family and then want to come back into the workplace that fear is for everybody it's not just this you know pandemic it's for everybody um every woman that that does that and then needs to get back into the workforce or for whatever reason hasn't been able to work and coming back in must be not just terrifying that you know i don't know what i'm doing but you know am i you know can i bring value can i bring worth um you know what if what if this what if that and so joanne's um project is 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 just one of one of many that is incredible and I'm I'm so happy that that she's done it but there will be plenty of other information um, available to listeners uh, if you are looking to get back into the workforce and you you're not entirely sure where to turn sometimes 
Absolutely. And I think Joanne is definitely one to watch. I think she's got more brilliant stuff up her sleeve. So that's it for this week's For Calling Birds podcast. And don't forget to join us next week where we have an interview hosted by the gorgeous Natalie Spence. So until next week, see you later. See you later. Bye. See you later. Alligator. If you or anyone you know has been affected by any of the subject matter we have covered in this week's podcast, please see the show notes for details of places you can find help, support or advice. It's my crack pipe. (laughs) And <laughs> um, on that, I'd like to not on not on the crack pipe stuff, but on the on the question, <laughs> I'd like to uh, add add a little something. <laughs> <laughs>